Hello everyone and um, welcome to today's Let's Talk, Let's Act panel where we're going to explore the power of mentoring. Over the last couple of panels we've had where we've talked about um, getting more um, youth involved um, we've and we've talked with some women leaders at both times um, mentoring came up as a valuable resource um, for, for really anyone looking for some guidance and support in, in the industry. Um, I also think it's important, you know, when we start thinking about succession planning, like, you know, who, who are going to be our ne next new leaders in the industry and, you know, how can we support them? So with that, um, I am going to, first of all, let everyone know that this is, we are doing this in meeting mode. So feel free to turn your camera on. Um, if you have any questions, we are also, um, you can also ask the question yourself. So if you want to do that, um, raise your hand. And, um, and, and you can actually um, unmute yourself and ask the question yourself. So with that, I'm super excited to um, introduce you, well, uh, introduce you to Narani, not that she needs an introduction, but uh, I'm gonna pass over to Narani, who's going to uh, moderate the session. So um, put your camera on, take a seat and um, enjoy. Let's learn about mentoring. Thanks, Narani. Thank you, and thank you everyone for joining this uh, session. We are looking forward to an interactive and exciting discussion on mentoring. Um, and we have a fantastic panel with us today, and I will go around the room and introduce uh, the panelists. So first of all, I'm Nurani Nipuno. I'm the head of global engagement at Lynx, and I'm also a member of the URIX board. Uh, we have Lutzevis van der Laan, if you wanna wave. She's the Executive Director at Transparency International Nederland, and she's also a former ICANN board member, so many of you might know her from that. We also have Anna Claiborne. She's the SVP of Software Engineering, and she's also co-founder at Packet Fabric. Thanks for that, Anna. We have Kyla Clifford, who's Partner Engagement Manager at Netflix. And last but not least, we have Therese Sinter, Marketing and Communications Director at Sugeti Scandinavia, and also the ADHER National Lead. So the purpose of today's panel is to really explore the, the topic, topic of mentoring, different types of mentoring, uh, formal mentoring, as well as sort of more uh, organic and, um, and spontaneous mentoring. So we chose to do this in a uh, meeting format, that way we can hopefully allow for more interaction. Those of you who want to turn on the cameras, please do. Uh, and we will go around and hopefully have a very interactive discussion, but we also want to allow for uh, questions at the end from you. So if you have questions, you can uh, either pop them in the chat or wave, uh, raise your hand and uh, we'll make sure to get to them at, at the end. So uh, I wanted to start by actually uh, defining a little bit what mentoring is, because there are lots of different types of mentoring and they're uh, very formal programs as well as less informal, uh, less formal programs. So I actually I'm going to turn to you, Therese, because I know that you have experience in both. Uh, if you could talk a little bit about some of the more formal um, mentoring programs you've been involved with. But then I'd like you to share your experience with what you've done with uh, um, the networks of, of uh, women that you're in, involved with. Mm. Um, so go ahead. So I have actually been a mentee also, not just a mentor in my professional life. So the, the, the sort of professional mentorship programs that I've been involved in have been external ones before, uh, usually handpicking like lots of companies do. Huh? I'm picking a couple of, uh, in this case, women within the IT sector in Sweden from all the big companies, uh, providing them with both female and male mentors. Uh, so that I have personal experience in, and I think we will dive more into that further on. In addition, in our company, we uh, I, I work in an IT company called Sujeti. Uh, it's a part of this huge um, uh, group of, of companies called Capgemini with 270,000 people across the world. So, of course, we do have mentoring programs uh, internally too. So that's what I'm saying, that you can have these external ones where you handpick from your company to an external network 
And this, then you have these internal ones where you usually also handpick because it's impossible when you have a, a company of the size of 270,000 people, you see what I mean? It's impossible to get a mentor to everybody. And in addition, everybody wants the same mentors in between you and me. That's the case that you have these inspiring, sparkling people in your organization that you want to have as mentors, right? So, so, so we also handpick there and, and do specifically targeting also women, of course. Right. And then you asked me about this, what I have been doing in my female network. And, and I run one of Sweden's largest network for women in IT called Adher. And uh, we've been doing uh, that. I've been running that network for 11 years. We have over 5,000 members in 17 Swedish locations. So I'm super, super proud of that. And when we asked our members, what do you really want out of our network? one of the key things that came up, of course, was mentoring. So um, we were thinking about, if, so if we have this huge network of 5,000 people, uh, how could we connect them? And could we also connect these people with other sister networks that have the same ambitions as we do to provide you know, guidance and mentoring and, and, and the excelling skills of, of all these fantastic women out there? So we actually hooked up with one of um, the other largest networks in Sweden called Datashe, which is about 2,800 people, women, uh, mostly the ones getting into the IT sector. Uh, and in our network with 5,000, we have around, uh, I, I would say it's, it's a mix of people from students coming into the IT sector to CEOs. So it's a magic you know, network in, in, in that. So when combining those two, we said, so what if we combined all of these people and use the power of the networks together and create a mentoring program? Because also Data Shea's um, uh, members also wanted mentoring, especially the younger ones want that. So pragmatically, we said, what can we do with so many members and how can we mix and match these people together? And in short, we did a pragmatic approach saying, what we will take on is to say, we will match you guys. If you want a mentor or you want to be a mentor, we will match you. So we put up a, an initiative called Match and Go. So we've been running that for six periods now. So we're doing it five months. Uh, and then we have a, an administrative uh, sort of month where we do marketing and we we match the people um, based on what they say that they actually uh, have as experience or what they are interested in both professionally and personally and a little bit diving into their personality too so so that is what we've done so so now we've run that for six times times five five months and all we say is that we don't provide anything else but the matching and then we provide them with a simple guide guide and a handbook. So how do you go about when you get a match? And I think that's the most pragmatic and simple um, initiative that we could come up with that would also join forces with other networks that I think could be an inspiration also for other networks to do if you have a smaller one. Why not connect with other ones that also want to engage in a network or mentorship initiative? So that was in short what we've done. And we've now had uh, around 1600 uh, connections across these six periods where we have uh, uh, have this initiative. So I'm super proud of that. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And well, I'll, I'm going to get back to you and, and ask you about some of the challenges you've had and also what your advice on putting together mentoring programs. But mm -hmm. I'll turn to Lizavis uh, next and maybe because I know that you've been involved in a few different mentoring types. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and and share your your experience with that? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. And congratulations on this initiative, because it is extraordinarily important that we get more diversity in all walks of life. My background is uh, in politics. And uh, um, if we we find that if you have companies, societies, countries, 
uh, governments dominated by only one type of person. In general, at least in my world, that tends to be uh, white middle-aged men. You don't get the right kind of decisions. Uh, and I think we only have to look at the world around us to see that uh, things need to be dramatically improved uh, and uh, we shouldn't go back to normal. We should move forward and, uh, and maybe use this crisis to create a new normal in which all voices are heard. So this is really wonderful that you're, uh, that you're doing this. I'm gonna share a little bit about um, uh, the kind of mentoring that I've done, but also that I've received. So there's really, uh, you can do long-term and short-term and you can do individual and you can do group. So um, I'm gonna talk about two individuals that I've coached. One was, is, is still going on, is long-term. Uh, a lady, um, a, a black lady, I got elected to the European Parliament. I'm extraordinarily proud. She is one of the youngest people ever to be elected to uh, the European Parliament. Um, and uh, first one from the Dutch Antilles. And that was really a long-term process. She, um, uh, we, we connected, someone suggested to me uh, that we connect. And we've just been regularly in touch. Uh, and I'll talk about one incident where, um, which, is, which is public in the public domain, that where um, uh, there was basically a campaign for a candidate under her on the list to surpass her. And it felt very much like uh, they were kind of ganging up in order to make her lose her position on the, on the list. So for the elections, that's of course uh, very sensitive. And she was wondering, is this something personal? Is it because I'm a woman? Is it because I'm black? Is it because uh, I'm new? Uh, and, and we were able to talk about it and say, well, you know, yes, it could be racist, but is it helpful to call it that? Um, yes, it is people who would like to have somebody else in power. That's normal in politics. How do we deal with that? And I think, you know, if you have a concrete situation like that, that you're really struggling with, but you already have your mentor in place, someone who's been in the same position, who knows the field you're working in, who understands the dynamic, I think that made it much easier to try to, uh, to come out of that. And she was extremely, she did it extremely elegantly and she actually won the elections and she was able to jump over the candidate above her. So, I mean, it worked out perfectly in the end. I don't, you never know, of course, if it's, if it's your, you know, to what extent you as a mentor helped, but I can say that I'm extraordinarily proud and I think it's really a role model the way that she's done it. Uh, the other one was much more short term uh, and it was really focused over a three months period with, a, with an ask. It was a member of the city administration who was going into the city council of Amsterdam. She'd only been a follow up. So basically hadn't actually sat there and she wanted to learn how to, had a concrete ask, how do I speak up in meetings? You know, there's very often, especially by, in women, there's like, well, it's already been said. And, you know, do I really have something to add? And, you know, should we stop prolonging the debate? Whereas you see a lot of, uh, I don't want to generalize and I apologize for my blatant sexism, a lot of men who just come out and, and talk and repeat what's already been said. And, you know, it's called mansplaining for a reason. So it's extremely important to, to learn to speak up at the right moment in the right way. And so we thought, you know, we went back every week and we met each other on a regular basis and said, okay, what was the situation? Did you speak up? If not, why not? What are the underlying fears? What could we have done? So you make it very concrete. And because it was limited in time and it had a concrete ask, it's a very different kind of mentoring than the one uh, that I I'm doing with, uh, with the lady who got elected. Um, two other ones, which is that you can do it in a group. Uh, one is the European Women's Academy, um, where we have politicians from different uh, countries, and some are mayor, some are city councillor, some are about to become state secretary, some would like to become a prime minister. And we come in uh, and experienced politicians talk to them about our experiences. Um, and it works in the group setting because then you can also share, and then you find out that the situation is the same everywhere. There is sexism, there's exclusion, there's microaggressions, there's all kinds of things. And it doesn't matter which country you're in or whether at national level, international level, local level, it's all the same. And then that also is very empowering when you see you know, women being approached and, and coming across the same problems, whether they're from Lithuania or Greece, it doesn't matter. So that's, that's especially empowering because you get the group dynamic. And then I've also organized that uh, at, the, um, at, at my local level, which is we are a group of women who are actually at the same level. So it's not the experienced ones teaching the new ones, but we are called the Hague Ladies Network. We're all professional women and we come together uh, once a month. And all we do is talk about a specific problem. How do you fire someone? How do you give feedback to someone you don't, you know, who's not open to it? How do you deal with that nasty boss? You know, these kind of things. 
And because we're all kind of, we're in different branches, uh, different sectors, and we have different experiences, it can be very helpful uh, to, to just learn how others are approaching the same thing. So you can do it one-on-one, -on -one, you can do it in groups, you can do it including yourself as a teacher, as a partner. Uh, so there's many different ways of doing it. And I think all of them are extraordinarily valuable because we have to do this together if you really wanna change the kind of world we wanna have. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for that, Lucy Vies. <laughs> Apologies. Um, and um, I want to come back to some of the challenges of putting together mentoring programs and, and things like that. But since you've also opened the door to, to explore different types of, of mentoring, I, I wanted to pull you in, Kayla, because I know that you have experience in being mentored, but it was not actually as part of an official program. And I think that's a really good story there that you have, if you, if you wanna share that. And then I'm, I would like to pull you in as well after that, Anna, uh, cause I know you've experienced in both mentoring and, and being mentored. Yeah, sure thing. Um, thank you, Narani, for putting this on, really appreciate it. Um, so to go a little bit into my story with my mentor, um, and like you said, it was extremely informal, but I actually like it that way. Um, the way that it started out was um, I used to work as a data center technician for a smaller ISP called WOW. And um, I used to work for them during the weekends and I would spend the time during the weekend monitoring the data center. And occasionally one of our network architects would come in and he had different things in his office that he would go and grab, but we would always um, sit and just start chatting about different things like uh, my career path, where I wanted to go in life. Um, and not just that, we also would talk about just things in general that like he wanted me to kind of strive for because I was younger and because I was new in the field. He said, you know, you should go travel. You should, you know, do the things that you really want to do, you know, embrace life as much as possible. And to me, I just kind of started out in the industry. So I was kind of a blank slate in a sense. I was open to getting as much um, help, advice, anything that I could get basically to kind of help me figure out a path. And as I um, progressed in my experience within WOW, um, he actually was a huge part of connecting me into the role of, of, of interconnection. He was actually the one who brought up the role. And um, when actually when there was an opening for it within WOW, he brought up the role to me and said to me that um, I think you would be perfect for this role. I think this is something that can help set your career off. And I didn't actually know really anything about BGP at the time. Um, I was still in the kind of the beginner stages of learning networking and things like that. I definitely had an interest, but not to the extent of taking on such a big role. So it was very intimidating at first, but he was so um, like driven and so supportive of me that like I, I felt like I could do it even without having the experience, even with it being such a like huge role, he was a huge advocate for me to do it and just believed in me like um, undoubtedly. So he ended up actually being part of my like interconnection team when I would go to conferences. And he was the one who kind of showed me around when I went to my first Nanog. He like introduced me to some of the people who were considered to be like the leaders within Nanog, um, board members. He kind of gave me a little bit of a map of like who I should meet, who I should connect with and talk to me about like the different events and things that were going on within the conference. And the one thing that stuck out to me that, um, that I like to talk about is uh, during the first conference, he actually kind of pushed me out to my first beer and gear, which is like a huge meeting with tons and tons of people by myself. And that was a really big moment for me because it was a bit intimidating, especially being by myself, but he had that confidence in me that like, you can do it. You're going to be fine. Like, just go do it. And I didn't have anybody to lean on. And I think that like kind of like set the stage for him being a mentor for me because he was already pushing me to be uncomfortable. Even though we had that rapport, even though he knew I didn't want to do it, he pushed me to do it. And it ended up working out for the better, of course, but 
that moment really sticks out in my head is like, I would have never like put myself out there like that unless he had pushed me to do so. And um, even since I have left WOW and moved on to different careers, we have constantly kept in touch. Um, our contact is very informal. We check in with, the, with each other like every month or so. And um, he's always helping me with like getting kind of that external point of view for what I need to do in my career or what like what um what road I should take and he's never very pushy with it he's always very like open-minded and unbiased with it he just like he will kind of show me like the way that he thinks would be a good idea but lets me figure it out for myself because he doesn't want to give me that like solid direction of like you should do this with your career or you should do that with your career he lets me figure it out, but offers that un, like unjudgmental advice. And I think that is crucial to when you have a mentor is somebody who can look at it, you know, for more of an external point of view and not look at it as like their own career, like what would they do, but like what would be best for you based on how what, they know you. What an amazing person. What's his name? I think we should celebrate him if, if possible in this in this event. Indeed. Sure, definitely. His name is James Ashton and he works for 365 data centers. Well, kudos amazing, amazing. Oh, James. Guy. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think that's a, an amazing story. I, I wish I had had a mentor when, when I was uh, uh, at the start of my career. Um, but I think another way to look at it is also, you know, I wish I could be that person for someone else. Uh, so if I turn to you, Anna, and I want to pick up on, on a few of the things that, that you've said so far, but I'll, I'll do it after Anna has shared her experience. I know that you had some experience of, of um, being a mentee and having mentors, but you're also mentoring some people. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? About the mentoring or the mentee? <laughs> well, both, I was thinking, because you have both as, as experience. Right. I'm happy to share both. Um, yeah, so interestingly enough, like Kayla, uh, you know, I've had um, I've had not just one, but I've been fortunate enough to have multiple um, amazing mentors throughout my career. And very early on, I had one that was very similar that pushed me to do things. In fact, start my very first company way back in 2003. He was the CIO of Tower Records back when I was just a software engineer there back in the cool days of like doing stuff where a software engineer could decide like, oh, I want to make a, you know, a new, a new wish list. And there was no such thing as like how you make a wish list and you could design it however you wanted. So I was back in the really fun days, but um, it's kind of more to the point. And Kayla's story is that, you know, um, a mentor is someone who pushes you uh, to actually believe in yourself. You know, they almost have to believe in you more than you believe in you. Uh, because they're the ones that are telling you, uh, you know, despite any self doubt or whatever you may have, that you can do this and you should go do it, um, and making you feel, uh, you know, just that enabled to do it. And there's also a broader conversation here that um, of the importance that men play, especially in mentoring younger women in the industry, because there are not a lot of women in this industry. And, um, you know, like Kayla, myself, uh, all my mentors have been men, you know, do I wish that there had been a strong, you know, woman mentor that I could have had somewhere in there? Sure, of course. Um, but the fact is, is that, you know, all those positions were filled by men who were, uh, you know, amazing, amazing people, very inspirational. And um, without them, you know, I don't think that I would be where I am today. And on the flip side of that is, you know, now being a little bit um, as uh, in the world of Nanog, they call it an old timer. <laughs> I, I get to actually mentor people. And um, you know, there's a, you know, there's a real lack of structured programs, at least in the US, or at least that, you know, I'm aware of, you know, some of the cool, like, more minor things that happen is that at Nanog, for example, they have the uh, they have the newcomers lunch of which I've been a old timer multiple times. And that's, that's an example of a very small, like short duration type of thing that any organization or gathering could do, which is just pair the more experienced people with the brand new people so that, you know, they get, um, connections so that the new people get connections straight off the bat. 
and that the um, people who have more knowledge on whatever the topic is or you know the, the gathering can share that with the newcomers to make them feel more comfortable. And um, you know, it it just works great both ways because not only that is that you know the more experienced people get to meet new people coming in. So it works fantastic both ways. Uh, and then organically, uh, I've had a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of people always or you know think that mentoring has to be a formal thing. Most people that I've ever end up, ended up mentoring just come to me for advice. Um, you know, that's it is just make yourself available, you know, as someone with experience, making yourself available to younger people and being kind and being welcoming is the key thing that you can do so that people want to come to you for advice. I mean, it doesn't hurt actually to, you know, have some knowledge on the topic too, <laughs> but um, you know, a lot of it, you know, a lot of it is fear driven that it's really intimidating for someone who's just starting out in an industry um, or, you know, just lacks confidence to go and ask for an opinion or an advice. And so, you know, you want to lower that barrier as much as possible. And uh I'd like to think that I seem pretty nice because people like don't seem to hesitate coming to me for advice. And, um, you know, as being on the other side of that, as someone who is just an informal mentor, uh, you know, you don't even really have to give advice. It's a lot about just asking questions. It's about asking questions and making people feel, uh, feel confident. That's about it. Yeah, thank you for that. So I think there are a few things to pick out there. What what a good mentor mentee relationship is is about that it's it's about providing guidance using your experience, but also very much support. Actually, encouraging people to take certain decisions. Sometimes maybe decisions they could have taken on their own, but the support kind of gives them that extra push. But then extra there also kick. needs to be extra kick if you want. Uh, but then there also has to be a trust between um, the mentee and the mentor. So, um, you know, regardless of if you're talking about these sort of lightweight mentoring programs or the more sort of structured ones, uh, what, what do you think, what would you say are the greatest challenges in, in, uh, in mentoring and, and mentee relationships or for that to work or if you're setting something up? Uh, Therese, I'll turn to you to start with. Well, I would say it's this creating this perfect match because it's pe person to person, right? So, so you have to find uh, a person that, that that fits you in some shape or form, and that's of course the hardest thing to, for for any mentorship program, of course. Um, and then I would say important also is to set you know clear guidance, clear framework. How do we do this? Who's in charge of what we're expected to achieve here, if you see what I mean. So, so, so this is in our handbook, for instance, that of course it's important that the mentee in, in, in our um, uh, match and go initiative takes the responsibility of what do they want out of it and sets the, the scene of how, when do we meet and physically, or now we can't meet that much physically, but you know what I mean? And now online, but, but really sets the, the, the stage so that you could see what you can get out of it and you drive that yourself. So, so you don't expect to be, I, I usually say, don't expect that somebody will feed you with worms like a bird, you know? <laughs> it's like you have to want something. If you want to mentor, then you have to have some, what you want out of it and explain that to your mentor and set that up as a, as a, uh, as a basis for your mentorship. Yeah. I know that you talked about, and I see you're nodding, Lucy Vies, the, the, what the mentoring programs you've been involved with, you've talked uh, very much about the fact that it, it needs to be driven by the mentee. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I think what I really liked about the one that was set up with the uh, local politicians was that it was very clear from the beginning when you got the letter as mentor saying, you will do nothing. Your mentee will do everything. They will initiate the contact. They will set up the dates. They will make sure they reach out to you for your availability. They will present to you their ask. Uh, and so it was really like, okay, as mentor, I got to sit back and it was good because it showed that they were committed and that they were driven. And in the end, and I like that very much, and you know, when we get to concrete tips, this is one of my favorite ones, is that at the end of the three months, they were supposed to write a thank you letter 
to their mentor saying, this is what I asked, this is what I learned, this is what I got out from it. And so at the final evaluation, they, some of these letters were read out and it was really, it was really wonderful and, and very moving. But so they had very clear guidelines and this was done by, by an organizational structure. But this is something you can, you can also do yourself and say, you know, dear mentor, I would like to be able to reach out to you once a month. And I, I think what is important about planning is that very often, otherwise, you feel reluctant. You're like, oh my God, this person's so important. I can't possibly disturb exactly. them. And I remember that I had the European commissioner, Nelly Cruz, who was like, oh, Lucy, she can call me anytime. I'm like, oh my God, she's a European commissioner. How can I possibly call her? Uh, and so, so I think if you know, if you say we're going to call every single Sunday afternoon, every first Sunday afternoon of the month, you know, come rain or shine, and if we can't do it, then we, you know, reschedule within a week. It makes it much easier to do it. So I think planning it, planning time for it, and making it very concrete, but letting definitely asking the mentee to drive it are very important uh, factors for success of the program. Yeah, that's great. Great tips. Um, and so if you're actually setting up the mentoring program, so coming back to that matching, uh, how do you actually, how do you do that? How do you make sure that, you know, that uh, this mentor, potential mentor A, uh, is the best match for the mentee uh, number one or whatever? Do you have any thoughts on or pieces of advice on that, both Therese and, and Lucy Vies? Now I can start. Uh, of course, again, like I said, you have to know a little bit about the person when you match them. Uh, and of course, if we, in the best of worlds, uh, we would have made it a smaller, smaller initiative, and then we would have put three months to match people, etc. But we didn't go with that approach uh, because when you do it professionally, you have, you know, prof the ones that do only external mentoring programs, etc they put a lot of time into that. But even then, it doesn't always work. And I know that for a fact, because I've been in, in those kinds of mentorship programs too, where people just clashed because their personality didn't work out. And, and that's the hardest part, I would say. But, but all you can do is try to find a match in the form of uh, what is your interest? And, and again, who, who are you as a person? That's also very important, I think, and try to match people from that. And then it's, in, like in every relation, you never know if you're gonna love somebody like we love you not now, now Nurani, because you know we've met you and you, we've spoken a little bit. That is not always possible when you want to drive something fast and and then you you. I, I prefer to try and fail in these kinds of things, and I think people could think that regardless of whatever mentorship they're entering. Even if they just look for a, a separate person, they look up a person that they really find inspiring, etc. It's the same. You have to first start a relationship in some shape or form, and and there's that's the magic in it. And and you can't. It's like when you find your spouse or your, uh, you know, husband or, or 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 wife. It's the same thing. You you don't know that from a piece of paper. You know that from interacting with that person so so that's the hardest part i would say yeah no but i like your comment also about that you know even if you don't have a hundred percent success rate uh it's better to try and and you'll succeed with some and some might not work out but you know that's okay yeah lucivis please yeah no i i think you also have to just realize when it's not working you know i mean if you you can either build an evaluation say well let's just have three conversations and then see if it works out and you'll feel the energy you'll feel if it works if this person actually has added value for you or not whether mm -hmm. they're really on your side whether they make the time so and if that doesn't work then depending on their position i mean if they're from outside your company you could say look it's not working you know uh, thanks for your time or if it's someone you might actually need at some point you can say well i can see that you're very busy and then you go and move and find find someone else you know it doesn't have to be like breaking up you know, um, so and I think that that you can also have different mentors for different things. You know, you could have, you know, if, let's say that your your boss is like, well, you know, are you having plans to get pregnant? Because that would be really inconvenient. Well, trying to deal with that, you know, you probably want advice from an older woman, uh, you know, maybe from HR. Whereas if it's about, hey, if I want to become VP within the next five years, you might want to talk to somebody else. So 
it's it's sometimes you kind of bet on different horses and then with one you're going to go far and with the other one it's going to run into a tree so be be very pra pragmatic about that but at the same time the most interesting person may not the most valuable mentor may not be the one who you actually like the most because they're also going to tell you what your blind spots are what you didn't do well and you know uh. You messed up that presentation and all that. So mm. find find one with that who's interestingly different. And you know, you could if you become friends and have a lot of fun, it may not be the best person to actually be your mentor because they're not going to tell you the truth on the points where you really need to grow. Oh, that's a very good point. Um, so so turning to to Anna and Kayla because a lot of the mentors that or the mentors that you found was not actually through structured program. So you know, going through mentoring program is great, but it doesn't, if you're not involved in mentoring program, it doesn't mean that you can't find a mentor. So uh, in your, your experience, how, how do you find those beautiful organic relationships? I can go first. Um, for me, it was, um, it was through work uh, in, a, in a way. It wasn't a structured program. There wasn't actually any kind of program like that set up. It just kind of worked out in that way. Um, we kind of like set up kind of our own informal mentorship type of thing um, as like my career was progressing and things like that. Keeping in touch constantly and seeing each other at conferences just became our regular thing. And um, I was always able to come to him for advice. So that was never like, like an issue. Um, Another way I've actually found for finding mentors, because I believe that you can have more than one mentor, um, was through Facebook. I just made a post that just asked for mentors. I mean, it like I had a pretty uh, great network, so I thought that it would be a kind of nice informal way of getting people who actually had the availability in time without having to bug people in a sense, like we were saying. And um, I got a ton of people who um, messaged me privately and commented that, to, that supported me. And um, many of them were women. So it was pretty awesome that like having all these kind of women, um, people to look up to and people to talk to about just like different issues that I was having in my career and things that I wanted to like discuss that actually weren't like, but were more women specific. And I ended up getting in touch with um, Alyssa Miller. Um, and she and I had this like super long conversation about just my uncertainty about certain things that I wanted to do in the future. And um, I was thinking that I needed to like constantly go, go, go. Like I needed to always be doing something, learning something, all of that. And she actually gave me the advice to like slow down a little bit and take it in and you know try to focus on one thing that you need to work on don't do a million things at once one thing focus on that get really good at it and then move on to the next thing and it was like just such simple nice advice that i mean it was just something that like it didn't need to be in a formal program it was just reaching out like anna mentioned informally talking to someone getting that advice and then we set up time to chat afterwards and then that kind of evolved in itself into a sort of mentorship type of relationship but yeah it was just like looking into my network of people that I've already connected with in conferences and things like that that have always been awesome people to to talk to but I never thought about like having a kind of mentorship relationship with them because I always felt like they were very busy or, you know, because we didn't have any kind of mentorship program at conferences like Nanog and things like that, it felt like I was bothering them in some way because they had to take time out of their day to talk to me. And then, of course, I wanted to talk to them more afterwards. So, yeah, that's how I kind of like set up my informal type of um, mentorship. But I've also had some formal ones as well. They've been um, within companies that I've worked in. Um, they've been a bit more structured where like my manager would arrange for me to have a mentor outside of my um, org so that it still has a little bit of distance, but you can still connect with them. Um, I've also had one um, in my current company that is very similar to that, where it's somebody who is in the same field, but in a different org. Like for instance, um, the current, um, the current 
mentor I have at Netflix is a software engineer lead. So I work in the network side, she's on software engineering. We're both still in tech, so she still has a lot of really solid advice, but it also has like that, um, there's also kind of a like separation in a sense that kind of helps where we don't work with each other every day. And she still has that, that good advice to provide. Yeah, great. And I think that's a, that's a good point as well, the part about um, having someone who understands what you're doing, but not sits perhaps in the same team or the same group. Someone has to distance and who doesn't necessarily judge all the, the internal politics or the, the, the personal relationships, but can have an outside view. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a very good piece of concrete advice if, if people uh, are as brave as you <laughs> putting out a, a request like that on Facebook. I think a lot of people wouldn't necessarily be that brave. But I think, Anna, when we spoke, you said uh, that um, approaching someone often actually yields a good result because everyone loves, everyone loves the flattery of, of you know, being okay. seen as important enough to give advice. So do you want to speak a little bit about that? Yes, that is the most wonderful advice uh, to give right there as <laughs> as the mentor to everyone watching this call is that if you want a mentor, just tell someone that they inspire you and that you would like to ask for their advice. There is nothing more flattering in this world. I guarantee you, even for the most shy, introverted person, there is not a human on this planet that is going to turn that down and be like, yeah, you know what? I'm not interested in being praised by you right now. I'm going to go over here. That doesn't happen. <laughs> um, so that, uh, that is probably the, the number one thing um, that I would say to anyone looking for a mentor is, you know, pick somebody that inspires you and tell them that and that you would like to get their feedback on some things and you know ask when they have time you are going to get time and aim high too like uh you know if you're gonna if you're gonna ask somebody questions pick somebody really good you know and that and like never believe anyone's out of you know out of your league or too busy because even the people who seem to be um you know, or i should say especially the people that seem to be the busiest they're the ones who love, they're busy because they love to do a variety of things and put themselves out there and talk to people. So never hesitate. You're like, there is no such thing as a too busy person. It doesn't exist. Like they will, they will make time. <laughs> yeah, great, great advice. So I just wanted to, to um, explore some of the different types of mentoring. So we talked a little bit about those sort of company-wide structured mentoring programs at some of the more community-based or network-run um, mentoring programs. And also, for example, at the right meetings where we go to, they have a very simple uh, mentoring program that we decided to call mini mentoring when we were discussing it. Uh, so just basically having um, a setup where you do, you take people who have been to the meetings uh, for many years, so-called old timers and hook them up with with people who are newcomers to the meeting and uh, I think a few of us have have done that uh, have been mentors in that capacity uh, uh, a few times and I think even such a small this just lasts for the week uh, your task is not particularly complex I've always seen it as my task then to take that person make sure that they're always comfortable at a social, for example, I think it can be very intimidating to come to a social of a new event where everyone else knows each other and, and no one else knows each other, uh, or and you don't know anyone, sorry. Um, make sure that you can introduce them to some people so they have a few people to talk to and explain how the meeting works, how to read the program, how decisions are made, all those things. Um, so anything from those small ones to, to um, I know group mentoring is also one that I've done as part of a course where you uh, post a problem to the group and the group actually provides advice and mentoring to you. Um, does anyone want to exp uh, expand a little bit on those types of uh, mentoring uh, formats? And, and what I, I would also add, I'm interested in, I'm looking into that right now, reverse mentoring. I think that could be super cool to explore much, much more than we do. So having a, a, a younger junior person teaching a senior person in your organization, for instance, 
something, I would say on a particular topic, maybe. If we want to drive gender balance, that could be a perfect topic that could be reverse mentoring, a topic for reverse mentoring. Has anybody here tried that out with reverse mentoring? So not through any, not through any way formal, but I love that because pretty much every mentor I've ever had or anyone that I have ever mentored, it's become a relationship that's gone two ways, right? Like it's never a one-way street. Um, and it's happened many times where, you know, someone has sought me out for advice and a, a lot of times it's actually happened after like a talk that I've given or something like that. Someone will ask me a question and then they'll figure out that, you know, I actually am willing to spend time and answer the question. And, you know, so they'll ask more questions and it, it, it almost always ends up that I ask them something back or that I learn something, you know, even if it is accidental, you almost can't help. Like if you're going to take the time to be a good mentor or mentee, you almost can't help that sort of thing naturally happening because, um, you know, no one's an expert in everything. And there's so much value, you know, especially for us, you know, quote unquote, old timers. Um, there's so much value in getting a new and fresh perspective on things um, that, you know, for anyone who's interested in being a mentor, like don't underestimate the value that it can bring, like you know, to be selfish, don't underestimate the value it can bring you um, for that totally fresh new uh, perspective. Um, hmm. I, think I'm thinking, back to I was that. thinking about it as a, a, a concrete example of that you really reverse the thing, that you don't expect that it's the young person who's being taught by the older one. It's really about the young person for real, like this mini program where you could learn more about uh, or teach the uh, top manager about gender balance, how you see you, we should move the dial on gender balance in our company, or even learning about the latest new technology, because all these top managers don't always, are not always on top. They know a little bit, but that's also something. Learning new technology could be super cool. Uh, but I think that's interesting to really reverse it and say, this time it's you, it's the, the young person being the mentor to the other one, for real. Mm. And I think another well, great subject uh, for this is uh, unconscious bias and uh, and racism, because uh, a lot of people just are, are especially the older generation. I mean, as a, my yes. I, my son is sixteen and he still, you know, he says, you know, shut up, boomer, all the time. So I, I get the daily mentoring <laughs> without asking for it, but it's really important to to teach the older generation. Uh, actively um, how incredibly unwoke they are and that they just don't understand basic things. And, and it's, it's good for them because it prevents them getting sued, it prevents them losing customers, but it, it, you know, in the end, it's good for the organization as a whole. So just to offer it and to say, look, um, you're, you know, there are things you can learn from, from my generation, but it's scary for me to go up to you and say, hey, I'm going to teach you because, of course, they can't be taught anything because they're really perfect. So saying, would you like me to share my ideas with uh, from the way my generation sees it? I think that's a, a wonderful idea, Therese. You can do it more. And I mean, imagine the CEO of any of our companies or organizations, you know, saying, hey, I want to be mentored on this. Who's up for it? You know, pretty cool to say, I'm just... What are you doing right now at work? I'm 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 mentoring my CEO. That would be super cool. <laughs> yeah, that's I a love great it. idea. I love yeah, that, idea. that would be amazing. I think it's a really interesting way to also like level the playing field in a sense <laughs> too, so that you can feel comfortable that this person isn't like above you in some way because they're learning too. It just kind of like humanizes them in a sense where you feel like okay, this person doesn't know everything. Because I feel like when you go into these, you kind of automatically assume like, I'm just here to learn. I have nothing to teach. That's it. But it does, it works both ways. Like you can certainly teach, um, you can certainly teach more about like unconscious biases and racism, like you were saying. And, and you also offer the perspective of being a woman in some cases when you're, you know, mentoring a man to also like let them know that these are issues that are still ongoing within the industry. These are stuff that I experience like, or these are things I experience every time I go to a conference, every time I have a talk, stuff like that. Because we are, there are plenty of women and men that are out there advocating to make this environment a little bit better, um, better in general for everybody. But there's still a lot of issues out there that don't get talked about as much 
and should. And maybe in a like private kind of one-on-one -on -one setting, you'd feel more comfortable sharing those types of things with that person so that they can know that this is still something you need to be pushing for, advocating for, you know, being a supporter because just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah, great points. I think, you know, that actually also highlights the, the, the um, upside of being a mentor. Cause I think often when you think about mentoring, you only focus on the benefits for the mentee that, the mentee is supposed to sort of absorb all this uh, experience and knowledge and advice for, for the mentor. But I think, um, you know, there are plenty of examples out there of uh, me good mentoring relationships that are two ways, or in fact, maybe all good mentoring relationships should be two ways because it expands your perspective. It introduces you to, to um, perhaps new, uh, new types of people that you wouldn't necessarily have reached out to as, an, as someone who's senior in the industry. And I think it comes back to what you were saying, Lucivis, that you know, finding a, a good mentor doesn't necessarily mean that you find your bestie or you find someone who's exactly like you, but you're actually looking for that tension a little bit and someone who can honestly tell you, uh, give you feedback when, when you're doing the right thing, but also when you, you, you make mistakes or when you can improve. But passing it forward is amazing. I mean, as a mentor, it's beautiful. I mean, you get, it fulfills your heart with happiness. That's, that's for sure. I mean, for real to give somebody tips and tricks and, and tell them, this is a fast lane, this is my advice. It's so rewarding to pay it forward. I mean, it's it's a snowball effect and it makes you happy. If you ever think about being a mentor, just think it will make you happy, really. And also it will make you reflect upon your own achievements because you tell somebody, somebody something of your experience, how you did it or what you have done. And you start reflecting about the things that you have actually achieved and and surmounted or whatever. So it's a little bit uh, a, a walk down memory lane to remind yourself what you have done. And, and because sometimes we just run so fast, we say, check, 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 and then we run to the next thing. And we forget to tap ourselves in, on the shoulder and say, God, I did this and that. This is a, a perfect opportunity also as mentor to, to remind yourself of, of of everything that you've done, because you're going to share it with somebody else. So, so um, coming back to to, um, I want to look at both the mentee and the mentor uh, part. So, if we can go around the room, if we start with the mentee part, uh, what advice would you give to someone who's actually, who's looking for a mentor, both in terms of finding a mentor, but also what should they think about, or what works, or what doesn't. Uh, Anna, can we start with you? Sure. Um, I think I already gave this advice, but I'll give it again. If you're looking for a mentor, aim high. Seriously, go like go for somebody. If you think, wow, this is somebody who I would love to give me advice on whatever problem it is, you know, even if it's uh, Barack Obama. Hey, guess what? Hit him up. I mean, who knows? Maybe the guy's really bored and not doing anything and he'd be more than happy to help you. Um, you should have plenty of time now, right? So yeah, I mean, he's basically retired. So you yeah. probably everyone should probably ask him for advice. Um, but <laughs> I'd say yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, aim high, uh, always be, you know, always be very, very flattering. And um, there's another point that I think um, either Therese or Lisa Vies brought up is look for someone who has an element of like brutal honesty to them. Um, because Believe it or not, kindness and brutal honesty are actually more of the same thing than people think, uh, because being brutally honest is often the kind thing to do, and um, they aren't mutually exclusive. And someone who has though, you know, that element of being able to deliver something that you're not going to like um, in a way that is not, you know, mean or offensive is really important. So, fabulous. Thank you. Kyla, can I turn to you for the same question? Sure thing. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice for both mentors and mentees would be to make sure that you build trust um, with each other. I think that's critical to really having a successful relationship is having that trust where you feel like you are able to share things that you know may not be something that you would share with your boss, for instance. 
Um, maybe you want to go in a different direction. Maybe you're dealing with imposter syndrome or burnout. Sometimes you're not comfortable talking about those things. I, I think in our society, we're kind of built to, you know, go, 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 go constantly. And sometimes you don't have that voice that like tells you to maybe slow down a little bit or to, you know, rethink the way you're doing things and maybe build healthy habits. And that mentor could be that person for you in some cases. And with the, with the mentor side of things, just making sure that you are, um, that you're talking openly with your mentee and not creating like um, an environment where they feel like they're being constantly judged or criticized, I think is important too, because you want them to feel like they can talk to you about anything. You want to have that open relationship and build that rapport. But if you, um, if it feels like a job, you know, where they have like certain things that they should be doing to please you as well, it puts added pressure on them and it won't create a good relationship. It'll make them even more stressed and they'll be afraid to talk to you about certain things too because they feel like it's, they're disappointing you if they're not living up to a certain expectation or things like that. So just make sure that you, you know, look at it as also a friendship in a sense too, and as well as a mentorship. Yeah, great, great piece of advice. That, I mean, it comes back to that mutuality and, and I guess that you're not necessarily creating little mini-me's after you. That's not really the intention of a good mentoring program, right? Uh, I'm going to uh, open, uh, uh, prepare the audience for, for uh, that I'm going to open up for questions from the audience, but uh, I'll turn to, to uh, Teresa to answer the same questions and then I'd like to hear from you as well, Liz Elise. Okay, again, from a uh, mentee's perspective, be in the driver's seat. We said it before, I think it's super important. So, so think of what you want and make sure that's what you get and plan. When you get somebody's time, plan. Uh, from a mentor's perspective, be the three C's. Be a consultant, be a counselor and be a cheerleader. That's your job. So I think that sums it up a little bit for me. Very nice, the three C's. Thank you. Lucy Vies. Yeah, so I, I really like what Kayla was saying about being able to establish a connection and to have that, that trust. And in order to build trust, of course, the mentor has to also show the vulnerable side, you know, because you can learn as much from people's failures uh, and where they went wrong and the mistakes they would like you to prevent than only hearing like, wow, how did you make it to become whatever party leader or, or pre president of the company or something? So. That's, I think, a really important one is do you feel comfortable sharing those vulnerabilities uh, with each other? I think that's that's a key one. And then I think that the interesting one is um, to when you go in with a concrete ask, like, how can I make the next career step or I want to go to another company or how do I speak up in meetings? That may be your ask, but a good mentor will actually also see is that really the question? that you're trying to solve here. Because you may think that your next step is to you know, become vice president and your ask is how do I get there? But it may turn out that there's, there's different issues. So you, you need someone who actually will take the time to delve in with you to say, is this really the, the right question for us to pursue? And it could be also that at some point, some things can go much faster that you think you know, you're going in there like, how do I win this election or how do I get this position? But in actual fact, uh, the question is totally different. Like, how do I juggle my work life balance or uh, how do I deal with my daddy issues? I mean, who knows what may be holding you back or, or stopping your happiness? And it's really important to uh, to be able to to keep that wider perspective. Yeah, thank you. So it's, it's also about being open to the advice you get. So not being locked into what your question is and whether you know the answer is a or b but actually taking in the full advice from from your mentor yeah fantastic uh so i will open the floor uh, we have lots more questions to explore but we have promised to make it interactive so i will open the floor if anyone wants to ask a question please raise your hand uh either by doing it physically or putting the little hand icon up um and i will Give you the floor if, if anyone wants to speak and ask the, the mentors, uh, uh, sorry, the men mentoring panel, uh, any questions directly. I think one of the things we've learned was to not be shy, but to ask questions. So, <laughs> yes. <coughs> yes, sorry. Vita, please. Go ahead. 
Um, so my question, we've, we've, we've talked about um, trust and the importance of being able to trust your um, mentor or, or, you know, vice versa, the mentee has to have trust. How do you, you know, if you're potentially being introduced to somebody for the first time, how, you know, how long do you, do you give it for that, for that spark or, you know, and then what if, what if there isn't a spark? So as a mentor, how do you then say, I'm sorry that, you know, you, would you have to let them down or, you know, vice versa, if you're the mentee and it's not working, how have you had experience with dealing with that kind of a situation? I guess that's open for anyone. <laughs> So I'm happy, I'm happy to take that, uh, Narani. Um, I, I think it's really tough because if someone comes to you and says, you know, will you be my mentor? And, you know, and I, you know, you, you say, sure, why not? And then it turns out that it's really not going anywhere. It's, it's hard to say, you know, you just don't have what it takes or, uh, you know, I, you know, it's not going to work out between us. Uh, so I think that's why it's good to build in an evaluation moment uh, and to say, and I think after three meetings is a really natural one because the first one is getting to know each other. The second one is going a bit deeper. And by the third one, you should be getting to the core issues. And I think uh, if both the mentor and the mentee agree beforehand, let's say that you say, okay, we meet once a month. And then after the third one, we will have an honest evaluation to see if we both think it's going somewhere or not. That makes it easier because then you've established the process uh, beforehand uh, and that then it's not as as embarrassing. But I have to say that I've had situations where, you know, I was supposed to be someone's mentor and I kind of never heard from them again. And it was a bit like, you know, being ghosted on Tinder, you know, nothing there and not going anywhere and say, OK, never mind, you know, better luck next time. Yeah, yeah, no, good points. I'm going to come back to that, actually, and talking about the structures a little bit on mentoring programs. But I think you wanted to jump in as well, Anna. Um, I was just going to say that being, you know, or organic, um, organic mentorship, you know, tends to have a much, uh, I don't want to say like higher success rate, but maybe lower failure rate, because you tend to pick people that you're naturally drawn to. Um, but I have had the experience once, you know, where I told someone that, you know, I just like, I didn't think that I was the best person for their advice, you know, what they were looking for in terms of advice, I was not the best person for it. Um, because they, uh, you know, just what they were looking for was not something that I could provide. And I think the best way to be is just absolutely direct and straightforward is that, you know, what, I'm not the right person for this. Um, you know, I can give you, you know, some examples of maybe people who are, and um, yeah. that was that. Mm, that's a good good one. Yeah. Miriam, have you raised your hand? Go ahead. Hi. Hey, can you can you hear me? We can. Yes. Good, very good, very good. Thank you. Um so I have you on view other words. I'm speaking in this life, whatever. Um I also uh, this is really useful. Thanks very much. And also it's really great um to give tips to um how to find a mentor. And I think even us old time right now sometimes are still um you know, looking for mentors and I'm, I'm also still dependent on, on, on my mentors and I'm, I'm leaning on them but on the other hand I've also heard people say um, I think in some earlier URA sessions also how do you find a mentee you know there are so many people I think in our community who are um, who are happy you know as someone said earlier you know everybody's unhappy to help and you know feel they're, they're, they're valued when they are being asked for advice so do you have any tips also for um, how do you take the first step in order to kind of offer your mentorship to um, kind of younger people in the community and how do you find mentees good question i would um, use i would use networks i mean if it's inside your own organization uh it's easier to communicate i think but there are so many networks out there with depending on the the business you're in etc what what's your interest etc uh, you can go in there and then just look for for mentees in, in that shape or form too that's there are millions of networks out there and they're screaming uh, mentees are screaming for mentors in in the match and go initiative that we started we always have more mentees uh, signing up than men mentors so we always do hey now we're looking for we're missing 20 mentors here in this city or whatever. <laughs> so, so that's always, we're always looking for more mentors than mentees. But I would say, go into the networks, start interacting, give back, be generous, share, 
your knowledge. Well, p- perhaps we can even take Kyla's advice there of just like you can reach out and say, you know, I'm looking for mentors. You can say I can mentor people in these and these areas. I don't know. Did you want to say anything to that, uh, Kayla? Yeah, I was going to say that that's an, that's a great way to do it as well. Like using your uh, LinkedIn network, for instance, because people can share if, you know, they, if you want to like broaden your network, they can share your post and then maybe somebody can find you through that. Um, another way could also be um, some of the like newcomer or women in tech type of events that go on at conferences, because if they're a newcomer, sometimes you might just, you know, find somebody who is also new within the industry or is just in need of some type of mentorship. And that's a perfect place where you can go. And it's um, it's already a newcomer environment. So it's an easy environment for you to like, you know, start chatting with people and not have to worry about any kind of pressure or anything like that. I think that's a good route to take as well. Yeah, fantastic. I think it's good to start to have a conversation with the person, not just, I mean, you were successful, Kayla, saying, I want a mentor, and they just say yes. (laughs) But I mean, I think it's good to start, if you build a relationship and you start to get to know somebody, again, through networks, it's easier, through events, through networks. So because cold selling yourself to a person and, and even cold selling your, your your expertise or being a mentor, you might not want every mentee that's out there. So so a little bit trying to find the right person for you is important. That's very true. And if you can mm. find like a group of people maybe to get together mm. who are also mm. interested, you might be able to put together like an event kind of on the side with a conference. Like exactly. Maybe a lunch. Like exactly. A lunch. Or speed dating, in a sense. <laughs> mm. Yeah, great. I'm going to to go back to sort of uh, uh, how to actually organise mentoring programmes and, and explore those things. But I see there's a, another hand raised, so I'll let you in, uh, Lionel. Do um, you have a question? Hi, everyone. Lionel from PCW Global, uh, based in, uh, in Paris. Uh, thank you very much for that session. Very interesting. Uh, I learned a lot of things. Um, I had a question with regards to um, the difference. Do you make any difference between uh, mentoring and coaching? Because um, in my sales position right now, I'm I'm having a a team of uh, account managers, which I'm I'm, I'm, I'm coaching on a regular basis. But um, I was wondering if you make any difference between uh, this mentoring program and and a pure coaching. coaching of uh, of people anyone i would say mentoring is again you're trying to achieve something the mentee is in charge so so it's from that person's perspective what do they want out of you being a mentor for them coaching but you could still do mentoring in groups like we talked about you know um group mentoring of course but again targeting then you have to target something what do you want to achieve in there mentoring is a little bit for me more structured in my mind at least and then coaching could be you know like anna talked about somebody's approaching you in 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 different questions asking different questions whatever it could be but but it's not that structured for me it's more, I am here for you. I'm your coach whenever you want to. But mentoring is more, we have this target. This is what we want, this is what, what we want to achieve, even, even more than in coaching. For me. Anyone else? Any comments? Well, it's Absolutely. interesting because because I thought, uh, Lionel, I thought it was an amazing question. So, of course, I immediately Googled it. I was like, what's the difference <laughs> between coaching and mentoring? Sorry, I duck, duck, goaded. Um, so, uh, so interesting. I think coaching asks open questions. Mentoring asks direct questions. Teaching asks directive questions. So there's there's very interesting, I think, nuances. I mean, the aim of all is if you make a Venn diagram, uh, the aim of all of them is to help. I'll see if I can pop it in the chat. But the idea is that um, uh, that there is that you know coaching is more about enabling self discovery, um, and that mentoring seems to be a little bit more um, more structured. So uh, I think that's that's you know that it's easier to be a mentor if you've been in that. You can be a coach and be totally disconnected and not share anything. I think about yourself. Mentoring is more of a dialogue. I would you know in coaching. Mm-hmm. 
like, you know, you pay a therapist, they coach you to whatever, get over your issues. <laughs> and you don't need to know about them. You don't care about them. You know, mm -hmm. whether they have a degree, maybe yes, that's about it. But with mentoring, it's like, you're going to see, you know, they're going to share their own experience. And how did, how did you do this? So I see that's, that's, that's more of the, the, the difference that I would see. And teaching is very much one way is I'm going to tell you what to do, uh, which of course is, is a different ball game, even though all three of them are about helping and about helping people get better at something. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, oh, now I saw Chris threw in a last minute question, uh, just as he saw that I was about to, to, uh, to move in on the next level. Do you want to read it out yourself, Chris, or? Sure. And it's not really a question. It, it was just in response to Miriam's comment, uh, and I'm sure she knows this already, so I'm not telling her anything. Um, but yeah, the Ripen CC in the last few years at Ripe Meetings has tried to set up newcomers with more experienced Ripe Meeting goers as, as mentors. So if, if you're looking for mentees, then a place to start would be to reach out to the organisers of events where you're a regular. They might be trying to put these sorts of programs together. So there, I know we're, from Ripe NCC, I know we we're always looking for volunteers in that sense. Yeah, that's a great point, because I what, what I wanted to actually come back to was that um, so, for example, I've been a, a mentor a few times at the right meetings and with some of them, it didn't really work out at all. Uh, and some of them worked out really well. And, and I think, you know, it, even some of these mentoring, men, mini mentoring uh, programs can actually lead to something else long term. So I wanted to, to um, ask you all, since you all have experience with mentoring. Um, OK, so I'm. I've learned a lot already today. I want to go to uh, my local community or my uh, whatever communities I'm involved in. And I want to start setting up some sort of mentoring program. Where do I start? What should I think about? And how do I make sure it's, it doesn't become an overwhelming task? That's something that we can actually start and, and can grow. It's, uh, the floor is open to, to all of you. I mean, I haven't had success with setting up a mentorship program just yet, but I have had conversations about it um, within a few like members of NANOG. Um, the biggest thing that we came up with was uh, making sure that we have the right amount of mentors to mentees so that everybody could be matched with someone in some sense. And then you also need someone to create kind of um, some kind of plan like and also manage that plan as well as the mentor mentee like process continues because you want to make sure that it's actually working long term as well so you have to have somebody who's like checking in with the mentors and mentees occasionally to like make sure that it's still happening you know make sure that the mentees and the mentors are getting what they wanted out of it and if there are more people who want to be part of it have something that they can kind of join in on that's already structured in a sense so that it's not so that you don't have to do a lot of extra things to get them onboarded and get them like um, set up to mentor someone or become a mentee so just kind of getting like a formalized process and someone who actually like leads that process who mm. can stick with it is really really important that's something that we kind of struggled with with setting up the um, the mentor mentee thing with Nanog, is that we couldn't think of somebody who actually had the time to like make sure that they were checking in with everybody who wanted to be part of it. Okay, yeah, that's great. Um, anyone else? Yeah, what I would say is to do something lightweight. Uh, you know, if, if you're looking for a starting point, do something lightweight around a particular point in time or event. You know, whether that's a meetup, a business lunch a conference, do something that is, you know, very like time bound and very specific to um, match, uh, you know, the, and again, I think Kayla already said this, but the ratio of making sure that you have enough, you know, newer people there to older people, as long as you can kind of secure that one thing, you know, even if, if it's just around an hour and, and figure out a way to informally get those people together, like, okay, we have five new people five people with experience, we're going to have an hour set aside where they can just mingle and, you know, share experiences. That sort of lightweight program, if more um, 
more organizations, more businesses, everything did something like that. Um, it would be a building, it would be a point on which to build uh, these more structured programs. But the problem is we don't even have that, uh, you know, in most cases. So my, I think the, the best point here is start somewhere, start small, and then build on that. Yeah. I Can think, I just chime yes. in here? Uh, because I, I think, Anna, this is, this is the best advice because I know with my ladies circle and the Hague, it took us like three years to get our act together. Like how often do we meet and what, <laughs> how are we going to do it? Well, now we have, you know, we have connection and, and, and everything else. Now, now it's fine, but it took us a really long time. Whereas what I've noticed is that sometimes you just get, for example, you get a, a small group of women together in an organization. And I know that IBM has done this because I've spoken for them. And I, I know that, um, uh, KLM has, has something like this as well, where you just get five or six women together, say, hey, let's invite an, a, a speaker for, for a brown bunch a, a, a lunch a, um, lecture. Uh, and then we ask questions and you make it about, you know, a topic like, you know, work-life balance or how, you know, women in leadership positions or something. And, and then you already get the people in your organization who are interested in these kind of questions. And then you can probably already get a core group, which can then go to, um, uh, to the management and say, hey, looks like there's a need for something like this. Can we set up a mentoring program? So, but then you have your allies because doing it alone can sometimes be a bit scary. But if you're with four or five um, people who've just joined the organization or were at a certain level and want to move forward, then finding your allies and doing it as a group ask um, can be much more, can be much less intimidating than kind of doing it alone. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you said a few other things as well, Lucivis, that I'd like to pick up on that I think answers this question a little bit. And that was the thing about the time limit and putting the work on the mentee and then the evaluation as well, that uh, if that those, I guess, are quite simple uh, things that you can put in the framework of a mentoring program that is not overburdensome, but that still provides a little bit of structure uh, for a mentoring program to, yeah, to start up, even if it's lightweight to start with. But the mini handbook, like we spoke about also, it's, it's super important. So what do I do as a mentor? What is expected from me? Uh, what is expected from me as a mentee? Just having that, it doesn't have to be rocket science, huh? You, I mean, you can Google it and, and to, you know, you do your own handbook. We did that, exactly. We just checked out what do you think is important and not, you know, a book of it, but sort of a handbook. Short, concise, concrete examples of what, and even what they could talk about. So, so and, and how they can structure. Very short, concise, and then what you, we usually do within our organization is always, of course, it's easy to start with the high potentials because of course we can't match 270,000 people, uh, but we can at least start somewhere. But at the same time, of course, everybody wants in some shape or form a mentor in some point of time in their career. So, so that's the challenge. So, so that's what corporations usually do. We, we focus on the, the high potentials, of, of course, but then, of course, then do like we do. I mean, with the the uh, the uh, match and go thing, have a network. If you have a network, open it externally, and then you you tap into other networks, and then you can get a much larger audience, so that your mentees or mentors can be uh, both from from inside of the company and outside of the company, which we also spoke a little bit about. Is quite interesting, actually. Yeah, great. So you already have a handbook. You've done the work for us. So uh, maybe you in can... In Swedish. <laughs> but I mean, there's so much out there. You just go, you can Google it and you can find very quickly, put something together in, 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 in a day. Very easy. Very, very easy. We didn't, we didn't spend a lot of time on it at all. So pragmatic approach is super key. Get started, like somebody said here. Wonderful. So actually, what I'll do is, is I'm not going to put the work on you, but uh, I will put it out there that if anyone is interested in, in the handbook uh, they put together, you can come to me and I can translate, if not all of it, at least the key points for you sure. and uh, see what can be used in other circles. Perfect. Yeah, fantastic. I'm going to do a very quick round before I give you all the last, uh, a last chance to say your, your final wise words. So um, if you'd summarize just your 
top three tips, uh, concrete tips when it comes to mentoring, whether you're a mentee, mentor, or putting together a mentoring program? Uh, who's willing to go first? Summarizing what you've said. Sure, I'll go first. As a mentee, be brave. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. As a, as a mentor, ask questions. Um, it, a lot of times it's less about advice and just about you know helping people figure out what, what they want or what their roadblocks are. And as far as starting a program, starting somewhere is better than starting nowhere. So no matter how small, just do it. Wonderful, thank you. Next, Lisa Vies. Yeah, so number one, ask. Ask someone to be your mentor and define your asks to them. You know, what is it exactly that you want to achieve? The second is plan and organize. You know, if you know you're going to talk to each other once a month, you can save up your questions. Then, you know, it's not such an obstacle to call them up because uh, it won't be a big deal. So make sure that you plan. Um, and then the last one is, um, if it's going to be a more of a group thing, do a shared kickoff and then the shared closure. And in between you have the one-on-one -on -one mentoring. I really like that about what we did within my the women's network of my political party is that way um, everybody gets a feeling for what's happening. And then at the end, you, you learn from each other again. And because there's a beginning and an end, it's like oh, three months, no skin off my back, uh, but you still feel a little bit challenged because you want to come out with a good result uh, at, the, at, the final, uh, at the final evaluation. And then you can always decide whether you do a second round or a next round. Yeah, great advice. I can go next. Please, yeah. Um, mine were maintain a form of communication in any way possible. Um, it helps to uh, continue the mentorship going forward and to build rapport over time. Um, for mentees, be direct with your mentor. I think we've said this a few times now, is uh, if you have a goal in mind, let them know exactly what it is that you wanna get out of the experience and <clears throat> that can help everybody with timing, with planning, and to help you move forward in the way that you want to. Um, and lastly, oh, lastly, make sure that you are um, make sure that you are working on um, connecting and building trust with your mentor slash mentee. Um, I think this is really important for everyone to make sure that they do because it will, um, sorry. Uh, oh, it just helps with making sure that you build that kind of relationship that you're looking for that is more of a long-term, a long-term thing for you as you move throughout your career. Fantastic, thanks. And Teresa, your final three tips. From a company perspective, Action speaks louder than words. Stop thinking about it, do it. Um, from a mentor's perspective, be generous, open, and personal. And from a mentee's perspective, like we, I've said it before, I'll say it again, be in the driver's seat. Thank you. Some very good tips there from, from all of you. And, and I certainly have learned a lot. Um, we are coming up to the hour. The time has gone very fast. Uh, I will ask everyone to give their final thoughts. And if anyone from the um, audience wants to chip in in the end, at the end as well with uh, knowledge they have or, or final thoughts, then uh, feel free to do that as well. Uh, so we're going to do a, a very quick round of final thoughts or if you have a recommendation, a, uh, if you, if you uh, have a call to action or a question to the audience, anything like that. Uh, Lucivis, can we do it in the same order? So I'll ask Lucivis. Yeah, um, I think that whenever you doubt whether you can either be a mentor or a mentee, you look at the world around us and it is a huge mess. It's a patriarchal, sexist, racist clusterfuck. We're messing up the climate, our planet, uh, um, income inequality, lack of democracy, corruption, you name it we can all learn and we all need to you know, work together. And the least we can do is try to encourage the next generation to do better than we did. Uh, but we, can, we all need to do with this together because we only have one planet and there's a lot of work to do. Thanks. Wow. Okay, next, can, can anyone top that? I, I want to 
say that I have some takeaways. Uh, one of the big things was what Kayla did. I think she was super inspiring, saying that you could you could get your own mentor, sort of. I love that. I love that approach. And and I'm also encouraging you, all men out there, to be a mentor like that fabulous person that you had in your life, Kayla, that helped you. You didn't even ask for it, that pushed you. More men like that, we are we are screaming for you. We need you. And then I would say this thank you letter somebody mentioned after a mentorship, that's a key takeaway that I will bring back into my mentorship initiative. I love that. I think it's beautiful. It's personal. It gives a receipt if, if it was successful or not also. So a little bit of the reflections that I've had and, and wrote down here. That it doesn't have to be so complicated, it doesn't have to be so structured. You're so close in this virtual world, you're so close to anybody today. So being getting a mentor or mentee, piece of cake, just start now. Great, thanks for that, Therese. I think I'm next. Um, mine was to um, kind of go off of what we've been talking about before, about being vulnerable. This goes both ways. Um, I think we all have a lot to learn from each other, as we've been saying. And I think that vulnerability would help kind of create that human connection a little bit more and make it not feel so much like um, it's, um, it's only going one way in terms of what we can learn. I think we have a lot that we can learn from each other, from our own experiences, from our own perspectives. Everyone has had a different experience in life. And I think that's what makes it, that's what makes one of these types of relationships really, really nice is to have that outside perspective, even if you don't have the, the skill set necessarily to, to teach somebody something like for tech, for instance, or for public speaking or things like that. I think that you could still teach them about something that you've experienced in life that maybe they're not necessarily familiar with and vice versa. Yeah, great, thank you. Anna. Um, so especially for uh, the men out there, I'm gonna, this is, this is for you, is that in tech, you are shaping, you know, it is largely you who are responsible for being the mentors for the younger women that are entering the engineering, especially the engineering fields. So do a good job. And uh, the, the parting words for the, um, for everybody is the great Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So always take a shot. Great way to end this discussion. Thank you so much. Uh, I've learned uh, a lot from this discussion and, and I think it's, it's uh, you've planted a lot of seeds in my head and I'm going to think about what I can do uh, in terms of helping foster mentoring programs perhaps, in terms of uh, finding a mentor, but also offering myself as a, a, a mentor because I think uh, you know, regardless of where you are in, in life, even come back to what you were saying, Therese and, and Kyla, that it's a two-way two -way street and by you can learn from each other. You don't have to have a certain amount of reached a certain point in your career before you can be approved as a mentor, so to speak. So offering that other perspective can be useful to, to anyone. So uh, thank you so much for all of you panelists. Thank you, Lucivis. Therese, Kyla, and Anna, and thank you to the URIX and Bija for organizing this uh, wonderful panel. Um, this will be published on YouTube afterwards. If you want to look back at the panel, you can do that. If you have other questions to the panelists, feel free to contact. I'm going to offer up the URIX secretariat, but you can also reach me and I can put you in contact with anyone of our panelists or uh, I know that Miriam asked about the handbook and uh, I can see what I can help out with there. Um, and with that, I'll say thanks to all of you and I will hand back to Bijal. A big round of applause. Yes, I do feel that, yeah. <laughs>
Okay, thank you. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, to all of the, the panelists for, you know, first of all, your time, and um, secondly, for sharing your experiences and helping everyone else, um, you know, giving everyone else some sort of, well, in, inspiration, but also um, learning. I, like Narani said, I've also learned loads, and I'm super excited to, to do something in this space, because I've never actually had a mentor or been a mentor, so it, this is completely new for me. Um, so thank you all for sharing um your experiences on that um and um you know i hope we see some new mentoring programs in the industry let's uh, let's see what uh, let's see what we can do and how we can uh, help help there as well so i'm going to end this thank you everyone um it's been a, a, a good session and um i hope uh, to see you all again soon so thank you again thank you panelists and to all the attendees